Hey everyone, I'm John Lynn, the founder and chief editor at Healthcare IT Today, and we're excited to bring you another in our series of interviews with top leaders in health IT. And our guest today is Noah Crampton. He's co-founder and CEO at Mucho Health Solutions. Welcome, Noah. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, excited for this discussion. This is our ongoing series of ambient clinical voice solutions. So excited. And this one hails from Canada. So, you know, I love the international flavor of, of uh, ambient clinical voice space right now. But uh, before we dive into your product, tell us a little bit about yourself and Mucho Health Solutions. Absolutely. So uh, I'm a family doctor and researcher at uh, University Health Network here in uh, Toronto, Canada. Um, Mutual was born because, uh, I mean, the use case of uh, the pain point of the documentation burnout is everyone's very familiar with this at this point. But uh, I was experiencing this even in, uh, you know, a recent grad out of uh, medical school and residency. And I thought that's uh, it's not a sustainable career path for me. Uh, and I was also just passionate about how AI was going to sort of impact my career. So uh, actually, Toronto is one of the uh, leading uh, hubs for the development of, uh, of AI uh, in the world. Uh, Jeff Hinton's lab, I'm sure many are familiar with, is based here. Uh, so uh, our group uh, of clinicians partnered with uh, the Department of Computer Science at the University of Toronto to come up with the uh, initial uh, prototype uh, in 2018. And then, uh, you know, we decided to spin it off into a startup, uh, do all the privacy, security, legal stuff, obviously got supercharged by the large language models. And uh, we've been in market uh, since April 2023 and uh, about 200 docs across Canada using it right now. That's awesome. I mean, I, I want to step back to what you just said. You just got out of med school and you were already burnt out with documentation. <laughs> of course, med school kind of burns you out, too. But like but you're right. Like it doesn't take long. You're already burnt out and don't want to do the clinical documentation that's required. Yeah, exactly. We went into medical school for, you know, connecting with patients, like using our knowledge and our, and our sort of patient senator like uh, connection skills uh, to, uh, you know, provide our best uh, recommendations to those patients and, and the healing aspect of the job. That's what really gets us going. Uh, they're all the reporting after and all the like, you know, onerous administrative tasks and the electronic medical record uh, just sucks all the fun out of it. Turns out that's true in every job. I mean, we don't want to fill out travel acquisitions. We don't want you know, <laughs> no one likes the mundane uh, documentation burden. But anyway, let's talk about your solution. Uh, yeah, it's called Autoscribe. Uh, what is it? Yeah, so Autoscribe is um, is a AI powered digital scribe tool for clinicians. Um, so um, I think the concept of AI, you know, ambient scribes are quite familiar. So we are certainly um, within that realm where there's a microphone in the exam room or on a mobile phone. And as the doctor and patient are uh, having their conversation, it's listening to that audio, converting it to a, um, a dialogue uh, a text transcript. And then we take that text transcript and use our AI to predict a medical note. Um, and the nice features of uh, Autoscribe is that it's real time. Uh, it's very flexible to doctors' preferred templates. Uh, it's very accurate, I would say, when you do head-to-head -head comparisons. Um, and uh, we have, you know, coded uh, data structure in the back end that can be used for downstream analytics for health systems, et cetera. Um, so lots of exciting opportunities to build on top of it. Uh, the one th thing that I'm most proud about is, uh, you know, our sort of very transparent uh, uh, governance and data uh, use strategy that, uh, you know, this is such a critical area for the future of healthcare that, um, the key stakeholders of healthcare really have to have a voice in how this plays out. So happy. we're very proud about that aspect of the company. Nice. So talk to us about how this solution compares to other ambient clinical voice vendors. I'd list them all off, but uh, you know, there's like a dozen now. So <laughs> at least that I've done and, and probably more that I'm still working on. But uh, so how does your solution compare to these other ambient clinical voice solutions? Yeah, so, um, uh, so you know, some of them, Key features that I just mentioned are are the ones that uh, that I think we do uh, you know we do head to head comparisons we are head over heels so for instance the accuracy we're not just like you know slapping on a large language model and just hoping for the best we actually have a um, you know bespoke natural language processing pipeline um, that's doing individual uh, components of that transformation from the dialogue to the medical note. Um, and we have embedded clinical knowledge in the, in that. So um, we're, we're more accurate in terms of labeling medical information um, and uh, and uh, adapting to different specialties, uh, use cases, and 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 requirements. So 
um, you know, that's, that's definitely like our, our main selling point. But beyond that, like we have all these, you know, advanced features, uh, like, uh, the real time. So real time is actually uh, really interesting because all the layers of opportunities you can build on that. So in the moment, as you're talking to the patient, you're seeing the note generated. If the patient, if the doctor says, I'm going to prescribe you, you know, uh, a certain medication, a suggestion can it auto prepare, uh, where that can be enacted in the EMR. And, uh, just to let you know, we are integrated primarily with Canadian EMRs because we are focused on the Canadian market at this point. Um, uh, and then, you know, uh, certainly at the level of, uh, of, um, you know, providing benefits to patients is another thing we're very, uh, proud of, proud of. We have handout feature, uh, for the, uh, patient that can, uh, summarize the visit for the patient and the action items, and that can be printed or emailed to them within our system. Um, yeah, I can go on and on about all these different features, but, uh, you know, there's, there's certainly, um, uh, you know, the opportunity to do that accuracy comparison and see how, how we compare. Interesting. Yeah, I want to dive into the EHR integration and some of the international aspects, but uh, before we get there, talk to us about what the workflow looks like for a clinician. It, you know, you mentioned that you either have a microphone in the room, the cell phone, it sounds like those are the two largest modalities. And, you know, d- then does it go straight into the EHR? Do they copy paste it? Talk about that. Yeah, so it depends on on our integrations that we do have. Um, we definitely have a few, a couple of EMRs here in Canada where we it does automatically launch from the EHR and paste back directly into the EHR. Uh, but uh, we also have you know ones where we're not integrated uh, or we're only minimally integrated, so we can launch in the EHR, but then it doesn't post the note back, so you have to do the copy pasting. Um, yeah, so I think uh, in terms of how it's used, that's exactly right. Um, you know. Patient consent, we, we're really proud about our patient consent process uh, because audio recording a visit obviously is a whole new thing for patients to get their head around of, a, of the very sensitive conversations that have between doctors and patients. So we've streamlined that process, made it uh, made it very uh, uh, compliant with uh, you know uh, individual organizations' preferences as well as as uh, uh, jurisdictional um, you know policies. Uh, but at the same time, we then have a very streamlined user experience in terms of ease of use. So we're combining the best of both worlds as much as I we think is possible. And I think our customers would, would validate that. Interesting. And, and so is the note generated automatically, immediately? Is it an hour later? You know, you know, I assume they go in, they hit the thing, uh, you know, to start recording and then, you know, ask for patient consent, which is always a an important aspect of this that every organization works through. Uh, but then is it, you know, generated immediately or what, what's the time frame to from, you know, the recording to the note creation? Yeah, so uh, so as I mentioned, uh, we have real time output, um, so it's streaming, um, which is uh, certainly uh, very different from many of the other vendors out there. Um, so as your doctor, the doctor and patient are talking in the user interface, you can see the note being generated uh, live. Uh, it's maybe like thirty seconds behind uh, the actual dialogue in terms of the output. Um, and then, uh, yeah, when you end the encounter, when you're done the recording, um, the final note, which you know takes the, the entire context window of the dialogue at that point, um, and, um, will then take on average 30 seconds, sometimes up to a minute, um, and then you have the final version. Interesting. And then, you know, given that answer, I think I know the answer to this question, but how much of this is automated with technology or are there humans in the background kind of reviewing the notes? Uh, so the core product is autom- automatized, as you can imagine. Uh, no human could be that fast, I don't think. Yeah, uh, I would think. <laughs> so, <laughs> but we certainly have a privacy, uh, a premium uh, tier three um, feature set, which includes a human scribe in the loop. So as everyone knows, AI is not 100% perfect. Uh, it's you know certainly 90, 95% uh, accurate most of the time. Um, but uh, there are a lot of clinicians out there who uh, don't want to have to fine tooth comb review the note. They want to just like skim it quickly, make sure everything is in there and then move on. So that service is available where we have um, Canadian based uh, medical graduates listening into the conversation and editing the AI generated note uh, for any uh, areas that were missed and then flagging the doctor once they're done. And that can take anywhere from two to six hour turnaround time. 
Interesting. That's an interesting service. Uh, we've certainly seen the integration of scribes, uh, but yeah, it's interesting. You came from a tech perspective and added the scribes. Uh, that's cool. Uh, yeah. Talk to us more about the integration with the EHR. You know, it sounds like you're deeply integrated with a few, if you are more copy paste, uh, you know, my, my guess is it's Canada. So uh, is that Meditech uh, and although Epic's making a play for it. So uh, talk to us about your integration. Could, could it work with any EHR or is it really those Canadian EHRs that you're focused on? Um, so, uh, yeah, we're focused on KHR. We're actually focused on the ambulatory care one. So the outpatient okay. uh, clinics, uh, that's, uh, that's the sector we're, you know, selling into hospital systems. It's so, is a challenging sales cycle. So we're going for the low hanging fruit, the ones where, you know, sales cycles happen pretty quickly. Um, gotcha. and so we're integrated with, um, uh, uh, two of the three leading EMRs in Canada uh, in that setting, uh, which is uh, the TELUS product and the uh, Well Health product. Um, we're working on the third one, which is the Law of Laws product. Uh, but um, uh, we have technical integration with uh, uh, Epic, Cerner, and Meditech Expanse in the sandbox. And we're working with um, uh, hospitals for their production environment, some key hospital groups. Uh, that we're working through that sales cycle with. So making sure. progress. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot, right? Uh, I think at one point we're at 300 EHR. It might be closer to 100 now, 150, depending on how you count it. So there's a lot, <laughs> but um, talk to us. I mean, it's great that you're a clinician, a doctor. So, you know, does a clinician have to change the way that they're talking in the exam room to make this work? And, you know, talk to us about kind of that onboarding slash training process that's required. Yeah, so um, like one of the things that we're also proud about is how we've designed our welcome email because it's a it's a bit of a you know jarring new way of functioning um, as a clinician when they start using Autoscribe to use it to its best potential, right? Right. Uh, so in the welcome email, we have you know videos and step by step sort of PDF uh, screenshot walkthroughs of of how to best use it. And um, uh, for one of them, for instance, uh, you know we talk about how. Um, doctors are familiar when they go through medical school and residency of, of the OSCE exam where they have to verbalize everything out loud uh, so their examiner her, hears what they're thinking and doing. So we always make that comparison, for instance, mm -hmm. for the physical exam. It's not something you would verbalize naturally to a patient normally. Um, but if you want it to, you know, be captured by Autoscribe and documented in, in uh, the AI generated note, you, in theory, you should do that. We do have a backup um, feature in our, in our technology called the scratch pad function where you know, if there's, they don't want to do that for sure. Like, let's say it's a mental status exam for, you know, a patient with mental illness. Uh, you, you don't want to directly verbalize that to the patient in front of you. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, you can just type that physical exam finding in, in the scratch pad and the AI will automatically include that in the final note. Hey, interesting. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, so OSCE style, I also recommend, we also recommend in, in our welcome email, like if, um, if it's a sort of a very confusing history that you that, that has happened with the patient, like they're a bit all over the place and you're just asking questions in different ways to really figure out exactly what's going on. Um, restating, um, you know, in a summarized way, uh, what you've heard uh, fr from the visit as the, like we recommend that the clinician restate, it's resummarize uh, everything um, so that the AI scribe will know, oh, this is where the salient information is not where the patient was like saying completely contradictory stuff earlier. Um, so those are the kinds of things that we, you know, recommend. Um, but uh, yeah, again, in the, in, we have another backup option where when they end the encounter, they can use our dictation feature for the couple areas where it may have missed things. Sure. That's interesting that it's combining the scratch pad, the voice, uh, you know, a summary at the end. I, if I understand that right, you're, you're asking at the end, to, you know, and you can do it in front of the patient. All right. So I found this and I recommend this and this is the plan of, you know, whatever. Uh, th does that ever confuse the AI scribe, uh, you know, to that because it's heard it twice uh, or, or is it uh, have the models become so effective that redundancy is fine? Yeah, so there's. The textual um, confidence um, models um, have learned to start to understand, uh, first of all, the clinician being the one that's stating the findings is uh, weighted higher. Um, and also uh, the frequency of the same finding being restated. So quantity, for instance, like 
you know, patients said opposite things, but then the, the doctor restated one finding once or twice or three more times, it'll understand, oh, that's the actual correct finding. So there's different ways of, of, of making sure the AI is pointing the direction that you want to go with, with, with the final AI note. Interesting. So you talked a little bit about accuracy, but how accurate is the solution? How are you kind of measuring that accuracy with your customers? And, you know, uh, it's interesting. We've asked this of a lot of vendors. They all take a very different approach. So I'd love to hear how you approach kind of this accuracy question. Yeah, so um, that's certainly an active area of of, of research. Uh, so it's, it's it's really interesting to see how to, how to get at that uh, perspective. Uh, so we have sort of like a mixed methods approach. Um, first of all, qualitatively, you know, um, for sure testimonials from our clients from, um, you know, trying to get representativeness of those testimonials from different um, uh, um, ways of practicing, uh, you know, different specialties, different arrangements in team-based care, uh, et cetera. So we um, we are, are collecting and um, reflecting on those testimonials uh, qualitatively. Uh, quantitatively, we have our internal uh, sort of com uh, computational metrics that we uh, periodically redo for a subset of of uh, of the visits that uh, have happened, um, and uh, compare it to uh, human the human edited note. So, af after the AI generates the note, the edit the human the the clinician edits that AI generated note. Um, and we're able to quantify the amount of edits that were done uh, and then use a computational metric uh, sort of inspired by what's called blue, uh, a blue model uh, for comparing how much um, uh, difference there was from the AI note compared to the human edited version. Um, and uh, with time, as the AI gets better, it's gotten much less the amount of edits that our clinician clients are doing. So we, we, we talk target both. We're actually engaging with a, several Canadian um, research groups um, on doing more, you know, arm's length research at this point with transparent academic um, uh, publications that we uh, we will suffer if it's a bad result and benefit if it's a good result. So we're, we're ready to take that plunge with, with certain research groups. It's exciting. We're going to take that off in the next uh, couple months. Awesome. And then talk to us about your product and various specialties. Does it work for every specialty or are you focused on certain ones or you know, how are you approaching kind of that specialty differentiation, if you will? Yeah. So, you know, one of the best things about ours is that we're so flexible at the, um, at that level uh, in terms of flexibility of uh, um, individual doctors writing style template preferences, but also the uh, co like core uh, um, default for different specialties, how they write their their notes and 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 tuning the models to those specialty preferences. Um, so I'm a family doctor, so the original uh, out of the box version was certainly based on family physician encounters and trained on models related to that uh, and very optimized for that. And that's actually a good place to start because primary care, um, deals with everything in medicine at, at the outset, right? Um, and so you actually get a very well uh, diverse uh, data set for for um, different uh, other specialties that you'll you'll work with later. Um, and uh, but now we rep you know we're represented by about thirty three different specialties, all deriving value from it. Um, and I would say that we're making a lot of headway with um, being uh, the one of choice for very documentation heavy specialties. You know, you think of like, you know, psychiatry or developmental pediatrics, like there's a lot of different specialties that have very long reports and, uh, you know, the AI will take a little bit longer to generate those long reports, but much shorter than them writing those reports from, from scratch. Uh, so, so yeah, that's where, that's what we're focused on. Great. And, and, you know, I, I think we need to address the uh, international question. So you've obviously started in Canada, you're out of Toronto, which is where I met, you, you know, your team. Uh, so, uh, you know, we love the Canadian connection, especially with my colleague, Colin Hung, who lives there. But, uh, you know, is the focus to move to the U.S., to move to other countries? You know, what what's the you know, roadmap of, of rollout or is it just stay in Canada? I mean, obviously, TELUS has done pretty well. So <laughs> stay within Canada. So, you know, talk to us about that. You know, are you available in the U.S. and other locations? Uh, yeah, so... 
we're certainly like, for instance, uh, HIPAA compliant. We've done that uh, uh, privacy assessment. The the the, the main thing is um, we're we're a startup. We're you know we're trying to raise funds. It's a uh, it's a much more competitive market in the AI scribe market in the U.S. Uh, so we we want to make sure that when we do you know tackle that market that we're doing it in a an effective way in a way that you know we have deep knowledge of the local systems on the ground there when we um, so once we pass our current uh, seed round that we're trying to fundraise uh, we will uh, certainly aim to pivot to the U.S. and we're really going to target more regulatory heavy states that are similar to Canada because that's where we thrive uh, is in is in that kind of environment um, uh, and um, the opportunities from that, I think when they do that, when clients do head-to-head -head comparisons, especially at the value, you know, at the price that we are currently charging, we're, we're certainly profitable and we're certainly much more uh, affordable uh, in the pricing that we have uh, compared to some of the American vendors uh, that, uh, that I think we'll certainly be able to uh, um, effectively complete. Um, but for now, like our cert, like we've only opened servers here in the Canadian uh, jurisdiction, right? So we actually we actually do have some American uh, customers, uh, but they just accept that I guess that we're using uh, um, you know, Canadian servers, uh, and whether or not that, I think it's okay, if, given that we can prove HIPAA compliance. Besides that, um, uh, but uh, certainly it's not the it's not going to be a viable option when we f formally go to market in the U.S. Sure. Yeah, lot, lots of interesting questions there. Although uh, the beauty of the cloud is it really doesn't matter where your servers are. Uh, you know, for HIPAA and some other compliance, there's some questions, but yeah. interesting. So, you know, I think what everyone's going to be asking that watches is where can people go to learn more, to get a demo, things like that? Yeah, absolutely. So go uh, to our website, uh, mutualhealth.com. So M U T U O health.com. Um, you can definitely, uh, you know, learn more, see a video uh, of how it works, and then you can sign up for a one month free trial um, on the website as well. Uh, and we're also very, you know, we're trying to be very customer service centric as a startup. Um, so you can, uh, you know, book a meeting with one of our salespeople or directly you can send me an email, you know, noah.crampton at mutualhealth.com. Happy to answer any questions, do a live demo, all that. Awesome. Well, now I appreciate you taking time. You educated me on some new perspectives on this. So I always uh, appreciate uh, learning from you and uh, helping to share with the healthcare IT Daily community. And thanks everyone for watching and listening. If you want to find more great healthcare IT content like this, be sure to check it out at healthcareittoday.com or search for Healthcare IT Today on your favorite podcast applications. Thanks, Noah. Thanks so much, John.